Rise up, Arda Dewey, for Dervil Gadan. Born he was to a nobleman of high birth in Brittany, offspring of Howell, a mighty lord who dwelt at Brest, destined to be a warrior at battles across the sea. In armour in those early years was our hero dressed. On Camelon's field was where this noble gained his fame, where Mordred in battle was to meet his fate, a man of the spear, and Dervil was his given name. But more of that and later life must wait. While historians now tend to be somewhat dry, John Cowper Powys on Dervil's youth was more revealing, a reputation gained from the maiden's cry, a mighty steed from whom there was no concealing. Through the forests of Gwyneth and of Powys rode this night, escapades overseas to Ireland were also made, fierce in battle, a warrior who bled for what was right, so many other mortals were left in shade. A steed he had whose gifts were somewhat rare, when any maiden filled with Dervil's love were to pass nearby, his horse would turn and neigh towards such maiden fair. Soon in some cornfield he would with the maiden lie. A reputation did Dervil gain to break the maidenhood. Some even said that Dervil's rod was like the axle tree. Where many heard the Dervil moan within the biken wood, then saw upon the maiden's face a smile as she walked free. Dervil's rod was then tamed by a dancer who came from overseas. Tegveth, with a darker skin, with enticement won his heart. On Inislaud they made a home, whereupon each would please, so in childbirth six offspring, as Tegveth played her part. Then came the battle that would determine Arthur's fate. At Dervil's call the men of Arda Dewey would to battle rise. On Camlan's field so many fell to pass beyond St. Peter's gate. Dervil Gadan was one of the seven who did survive. In sorrow he viewed the carnage strewed across the battlefield, young lives lost as greed and revenge had hoped for a crown to gain. Upon his knees he wept, and t'was then to the Lord he did yield, resolved that a warrior of repute he would no longer remain. Ardidui's hero retired at first to the hermit's cell, a life of solitude at first within stone walls, fasting often and surviving on the water from the well, seeking forgiveness from the Lord until he heard the calls. Upon the call from above, to Hanwit Monastery he went, a monk to follow God in daily toil and evening prayer, work with herbs and potions to seal the sick God sent, to help the old and infirm and all who needed care. An abbot at Inislenli, some say, that was where he breathed his last. A warrior who killed in youth had died a warrior for God. Durful remains a Celtic saint. His influence over Dart Nidui was vast. Did he stand by those dolmens where stone caps were covered by the sod? At Clanverhandle Church they dedicated their relief, an image removed by Cromwell to burn another saint, one torch for God used to try and destroy belief. His life will ne'er be forgotten with the image that I paint.